What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to talk about Unico's 26 inch 4x3 arcade CRT replacement LCD monitor. It's kind of a bit of a mouthful there, but basically this is the LCD monitor that's going to replace that burned out CRT in your arcade and this is definitely something that a lot of people have been waiting for. Never before have we seen a LCD monitor with this aspect ratio in this size. So this is kind of a big deal. And 26 inch is the sweet spot. It's definitely going to be the preferred size for fighting games and a lot of uh, a lot of other arcade games, specifically midway racing games, which is exactly what I chose. That's the cabinet that I chose to put my monitor in. I have a Cruising World cabinet I've been working on, and I thought that this was going to be the perfect uh, donor cab for it because this came to me. I bought this secondhand, and it came to me with a 16x9 HD TV. You know, the kind of TV that you pick up at Best Buy or Walmart for, you know, maybe a hundred bucks and you fit in there, and the mount was pretty homemade, and it served its purpose, and it was fine, but the problem with those 16x9 TVs is that, you know, it's going to go ahead and format and give you the 4x3 option, but you're really limited on the screen size because the physical TV TV is just so damn wide. It's just, you know, you're going to fit whatever you can fit inside that arcade cabinet. So you end up with like a 32 inch TV, maybe smaller than that, maybe like a 27. And then that image ends up being like 19 uh, ish, you know, and it just doesn't do the cabinet justice, especially one of these cabinets that was really made to have a 25, 26 inch CRT in it. That's definitely the way you want to go, that's the size you want to go. So a while back, I got my uh, hands on this. I pre-ordered this. I was uh, one of the first ones to get this. And I know it kind of took me a while to get this video together. But, you know, life gets in the way and I travel and all that. But finally, I was able to get this thing unboxed. I did a little quick video for you. And it was time to go ahead and let's get this thing installed in the cabinet. Now, before I could get started fabricating the mount for the LCD panel, there were a few stock pieces I needed to buy for my cabinet because, like I said, it came to me with an HDTV built in. So I had to find a set of stock CRT mounts for a Midway cabinet. I found those on eBay. So they showed up. They were in really good shape, almost looked brand new. So that was great. And I needed a plastic bezel because I wanted to mimic the depth of a CRT inside this cabinet. Now, I couldn't find one for a Cruisin' World cabinet, but I did find one for a Arctic Thunder. I'm sorry, a Hydro Thunder cabinet and I had to peel some stickers off the side to kind of get rid of some of that uh, some of that branding but beyond that it fit the size of the cabinet perfectly now for the LCD panel mount I started with a piece of half inch MDF cut to the rough size to fit inside the cabinet I marked the location of the mounting holes put it inside the cabinet and now it was time to figure out the exact location of that LCD panel you know where I was going to actually cut the hole in the wood to mount this thing and I found that location by placing the bezel inside and then marking that rough location after that, it was just a matter of taking some good measurements, cutting out a hole, mounting the LCD panel in, and then getting this inside the cabinet. And now comes the fun part, and I thought the easy part, it was just going to be hooking up the wires. Uh, I was going to go ahead and reuse the same uh, converter board inside that converted the uh, signal, the CGA signal, into a VGA or HDMI signal. I thought I'd go ahead and just reuse that uh, VGA cable, plug that in, and away you go. And unfortunately... It wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. It wasn't quite what I expected. The image didn't quite fit inside this LCD panel. It was weird. It was like it was fine. The image left and right was fine and all the top was visible, but the bottom was just cut off. So to make troubleshooting just a little bit easier, I decided to go ahead and remove the entire LCD assembly and then see if I could plug in different uh, input devices and get a different result. And my results were at best mixed. So when I plugged in my Dreamcast with a VGA cable, the image top and bottom fit just fine, but there's these black bars that kind of appeared left and right, and that was a little bit weird. Now I also have another arcade cabinet, my SCI cabinet, and it also has a uh, an LCD modification, you know, built in, and it had a VGA cable also. I took that, plugged that into the back of the monitor, and the image actually fit. So it was at this point that I decided to go ahead and go back to a CGA connector on my Midway cabinet, and then I could use the input on the Unico monitor and thought, I figured that maybe that would help. Well, when I did that, it was exactly the same as far as the image and its fitment on the monitor, but the image itself, the quality was just so much worse. So it was definitely a better idea to go ahead and use the VGA. So I went back to the VGA, tried this again, and while the image was, you know, it returned to that nice, clean, crisp image, the placement, the, the image inside of the monitor, just it just didn't quite fit. It was really frustrating. 
So in the midst of my frustration, I was forwarded a retro RGB article about the Unico monitor and actually highlighted a lot of the same issues that I was having. They actually pointed out other things that I didn't really notice right off the bat. The fact that the resolution was actually not 1600 by 1200 like they advertised, but it was actually 1280 by 1024. And some of the reasons why we were having issues connecting different input devices because they actually just used a 32 inch HDTV board inside the panel uh, to, I guess, interpret the input signal. So maybe that was some of the reasons why I was getting some funky results. But in the article, there was a little ray of sunshine. Retro RGB did mention that they had reached out to Unico and Unico said that they were working on a firmware update to try to fix some of these issues. And then a few days later, I was watching TNT Amusements live stream and Todd actually had a cruising USA cabinet and they were also doing the same thing that I was doing, putting in a Unico 26 inch monitor and they had the exact same issue that I had where the fitment of the image was, while left and right was fine and the top was okay, the bottom was just cut off. So they're experiencing the same issues. So it wasn't just me, it wasn't something funky going on with my machine. And he also mentioned that Unico was working on a firmware update. And there was also another little tidbit of information that Todd kind of let the community know. While you can go to Amazon and spend $40 on the, uh, the, the board that converts CGA to VGA, uh, there is also a little board that's only about 12 or $13 that you can buy on eBay that doesn't require power that will convert your stock signal into a VGA signal and even allows you to adjust some of the colors. So I went ahead and picked up one of those for another cabinet. I have uh, planned to modify with another Unico uh, monitor, but that's going to be a 19 inch. So I'm curious to see if I have the same issues with that monitor. So after all that, what is the status of the project? What have I done with the Unico monitor? Have I bashed it with a hammer out of frustration? Well, no, you can actually see it. It's actually back in the cabinet right over my shoulder there. I'm going to have to just deal with that image fitment for now. The image quality is actually pretty good. Now, I know the advertised resolution isn't exactly, uh, you know, what it is now. And that's for the most part, fine for this arcade application. I know if you're gonna to try to use this in a different application, maybe retro gaming or plugging in a Windows PC to it, you may have uh, you know, varying results. But I think for my application, for this application, the monitor actually looks pretty good. So unfortunately, that means that as of right now, I cannot recommend this monitor, at least not entirely. At $300, it's not exactly cheap, and there's some basic things that they just really need to get right. You should be able to plug this into any arcade, I mean, because this is basically what it's advertised for. It's advertised as a replacement CRT monitor, right? So your image, at the very least, should fit the actual LCD panel. Until they can get that figured out, until they can get uh, the right firmware update or you know get new drivers installed on their existing panels, until all these issues are alleviated, I just can't quite recommend it. But I think there's a little bit of hope on the horizon. This is definitely a good foot forward. They just really need to push this over the finish line. Okay, so that about wraps it up for now. But if you have any other questions, make sure you put them down in the comment section below. And as soon as I have something new to report, I'll film a follow-up video. And hopefully, fingers crossed, all my problems will be solved. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the channel. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see you next time.